Hello there and welcome to JCT's Fascinating Hobbies. Today we are going to be changing the crank angle sensor on my 1988 Jaguar XJ40 3.6. Now the crank angle sensor lives down near the crank pulley. It's actually just above the crank pulley at the front of the engine as can be shown here. So that fat connector you can see under that top coolant hose is the connector for the crank angle sensor. Uh, my vehicle, being an earlier XJ40, actually has the fat connector. Uh, the later models have a smaller connector, uh, which is the only type of connector that's now available. The fat connector is no longer available. So, in a later video, I've actually saved my old sensor. I've actually got a, um, a small connector sensor, and I'm going to be... Uh, demonstrating how you can actually make the small connector sensor work with a fat connector car. This is actually one of the last available fat connector sensors uh, which I was quite lucky to get hold of but I did pay uh, a good amount of money for said sensor. Now to get to the connector itself you need quite a long extender uh, with a 5-32 hexagonal um, bit on the end of said extender. So what I've actually done here is I've loosened it off and I'm just spinning off the uh, the bolt uh, just to uh, to the point where I can actually get the sensor out. There's a uh, there's the bolt there. Now when you're actually replacing this sensor um, the reason why you may be replacing it is you may have a condition where either when the vehicle gets hot you start to have sort of rough running say the vehicle will misfire uh, or you've got a no start condition and you, everything else is checked out so fuel is checked out etc fuel delivery uh, spark etc uh, typically if you've got a no start condition the vehicle will crank but the fuel pump will not engage and that's usually a sign that the uh, the crank angle sensor is on its way out. It is very easy to remove the sensor because once that bolt is actually removed, as you can see here, the sensor just waggles out of its housing. It's also worth, uh, whilst you're around the area, checking the reluctor ring on the crank pulley itself. If the reluctor ring is in any ways covered in rust or dirty, then the actual um, pickup on the sensor may not be picking up correctly due to that sort of dirt and rust and it may actually be worth just giving that uh, reluctor ring a bit of a clean. The sensor itself is not actually in a, um, a terrible position. I mean this car is now 30 years old and it, it, it's only sort of within the past year or so that I've noticed issues with the sensor. So we are actually at a point now where um, we actually have to replace the sensor due to age degradation rather than sort of being attacked by heat etc or anything of that sort of nature. The the sensor is, is really is at the bottom of the engine. The worst it actually has actually got is just dirty. Now this particular stage here I initially thought that I had to remove a um, a bracket on the front of the engine. You don't. All you need to do is just to cut this little uh, cable tie which holds the wire into um, a bracket there. You don't need to unscrew anything, you don't need to unbolt anything, in fact the only thing you need to unbolt is the uh, sensor itself. And there's the sensor, just pulled it out of the car. As you can see it is very very dirty and uh, I may actually sort of just clean up this particular sensor and uh, try and test it if I can using my multimeter to see if it is actually working and if it can be sort of reused. So once you've replaced the sensor and you've rerouted your cable it really is just a case of tightening that sensor back up, tightening that bolt back up and again because it is going into uh, a bracket which uh, you could easily strip the thread on, uh, hand tight plus quarter of a turn should be enough to uh, see that bracket, see that uh, sensor mounted and installed correctly. The job itself in total took me around 15 minutes to complete. Uh, it didn't actually take that long at all. Um, probably the longest part was um, getting the uh, getting the cable, cut, cable tie cut because it is in a really awkward position. 
so you can get a pair of snips down in there, but it's a little bit awkward to actually um, actually sort of snip off. And the final check of uh, the sensor, just make sure that you've got your cable routed away from any pipe work. If you notice here, I've actually got the power steering, I think that's a power steering, no, sorry, that's not a power steering pipe, that is a va um, hydraulic pipe for the high pressure braking system coming off the pump on the front of the engine. Um, I'm going to actually place uh, a bit of material in between that and the cable there because uh, I have routed the cable over the top of it, so it was just a little bit easier to get it in that way. So it is just uh, worth making sure that you have the cable away from any sources of heat. And that concludes today's video. If you have enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a like, and also consider subscribing for more upcoming fascinating hobbies.